Welcome to Lifehacker. In this video, we're going to show you how to overclock your video card to squeeze a bit more performance out of your games. We're just going to show you the basic steps involved here, but there's a lot more to know about the process, and not every card follows the exact same steps. So be sure to read through the full guide on Lifehacker below before you get started. To overclock your card, you'll need a few tools. First and foremost, you'll need an overclocking tool, obviously. We're going to use MSI Afterburner in this guide, but there are a lot of similar programs out there, like EVGA Precision and others. Note that it doesn't matter what brand video card you have. MSI Afterburner will work regardless of whether you have an MSI card, for example. You'll also want a benchmarking tool that'll push your card to the limit, which will help us test its stability. We're going to use a free tool called Heaven. Lastly, we recommend downloading GPU-Z, which gives you a ton of information about your card and is a good way to ensure that everything's going according to plan as you overclock. Once you've got all your tools together, it's time to get started. Step one is to research your card. Before you start up any overclocking utilities or stress tests, poke around forums like overclock.net and see what kind of clocks other people are getting out of the same card. Do not just apply these clocks and call it a day though. Every single card is different, and you may not get the same clocks as someone else with the exact same model. But knowing what kinds of speeds other people are getting can help you troubleshoot along the way. Be sure to see what people consider a safe voltage, too. Once you've done a bit of research, you're ready to start benchmarking. Open up MSI Afterburner and note your card's stock speeds. We're going to benchmark these first to ensure the card is stable, and give ourselves a benchmark against which we can measure our tests later. Open up Heaven and adjust its settings as high as you want. I'm going to adjust them fairly high to ensure my fairly recent GPU is taxed. Make sure your resolution is set to System, and when you're ready, click the Run button. This will start up a series of scenes that play, stressing your card to its maximum potential. Don't worry if it seems slow or choppy. That's what we want, since it's pushing your card as far as it can go. Click the Benchmark button in the upper left hand corner to start benchmarking. You'll see some information about your card in the upper right hand corner, including its clock speeds and its temperature, and you'll see information about the benchmark run in the bottom right. After a few minutes, when the benchmark finishes going through all 26 scenes, you should see this window, which gives you a score. This is how Heaven measures performance. I usually like to write this down just so I can measure how much my overclock settings increase performance later on, which can come in handy. Now it's time to finally start overclocking. Head over to MSI Afterburner and bump up your core clock a bit, usually by about 10 MHz or so. Click Apply, and save this profile to one of Afterburner's slots. Do not check Apply at Windows Startup just yet, we're going to save that for the very end. Now check GPU-Z and make sure it has the same core clock value as the one you just set. If it does, you're ready to go. Start up Heaven and do another benchmark run. If it completes successfully, head back to Afterburner and bump up the core clock a little bit more, then run Heaven again. You see where this is going. At some point, you'll start running into issues. Either Heaven will give you a black screen, or your graphics driver will crash, or you'll start to see artifacts in the screen. Artifacts are little graphical errors from your card getting pushed too hard. So these little black boxes in the corner, or these colored blotches you're seeing on the screen right now, these are what you're looking for. If any of those problems surface, then your overclock is unstable. When you have an unstable overclock, you have two choices. You can back the core clock down to its last stable clock and call it a day, or you can raise the voltage. Raising the voltage allows us to achieve higher overclocks, but it can decrease the lifespan of your card, so only continue if you're ready to take on that risk. Head to Afterburner settings and under the General tab, check the Unlock Voltage box. This will allow you to change the voltage given to your card. Now, raise the voltage up a notch and try running Heaven again. If everything goes okay, you've got to a stable clock speed and you can raise the core clock again. Repeat this process, raising the voltage whenever necessary. Now is when you really want to start watching your temperature. Most modern cards can go up to 90 degrees just fine, but I usually prefer to keep them under 90. What you're comfortable with is up to you. Afterburner's fan will try and keep you under 90 with its fan set to auto, but you can go into its settings and change the fan curve to suit your tastes. Eventually, you'll get to a point where one of three things happens. You'll either get to your max safe voltage, you'll reach unsafe temperatures for your GPU, 
or your car just doesn't want to stay stable past a certain point, which can be the case if your car just isn't a great overclocker. It happens. Luck of the draw. When you get to that point, you've reached your maximum possible overclock for the core clock. Now you can repeat this process for your memory clock. It won't give you as big of a performance boost as the core clock, but it shouldn't be too hard to find its max value. When you're done, and you've found the maximum for each, it's time to do some more intense stress testing. So my highest stable overclock is right here. Any higher and I'd have to go past 1100 millivolts, which is what most people consider the highest safe voltage for my card. So I'm going to run heaven again, but instead of clicking benchmark, I'm going to just let it run. Run it for a few hours, and if it runs for that long without any artifacting or crashing, you can be reasonably sure your overclock is stable at this level. Of course, as good of a stress test as heaven is, the best way to truly test your overclock is to play a game. Pick out one or two of the most graphics intensive games you have and find a level with lots of stuff going on to see if it crashes or artifacts, like the Uprising mission on Battlefield 3 where you have a ton of fire and rain and enemies running around, or really anything with lightning in Skyrim. That lightning never fails to crank up my graphics card. Once you've gone through your bevy of stability tests, you're done. If you ever see any artifacting or notice any crashes, try backing off your overclock just a bit to see if that helps. But chances are you've reached your highest stable overclock. Check that apply overclocking at system startup box in MSI Afterburner and enjoy your new overclock GPU. The process does take a while, but I've found that in games like Battlefield 3, when my video card starts struggling, I can get about 10 more frames per second out of it when it's overclocked. Your mileage will vary, but it's well worth the endeavor. Good luck.